I welcome you all to the session of hydraulic machines and the topic of today's discussion is again on the velocity triangles of the pump. Okay. So, in continuation of my last lecture on this topic, today we will just briefly recapitulate the velocity triangles and then we will see the effect of inlet swirl on the pump operation. So, if I write uh, that is the radial flow pump radial flow pump and if we try to draw the impeller of a radial flow pump probably from there we will try to analyze the effect of inlet swirl. Okay. So, this is the impeller of a radial flow pump and if we take out any blade and then if we try to draw the velocity triangles at the inlet and outlet probably we have discussed this part, but I am recapitulating today. So, if we take this particular blade and if we try to draw Okay. So, we have drawn the velocity triangles both at inlet and outlet. We have identified three different velocity components that is the tangential component of the blade, then the relative velocity of the fluid, relative velocity of the flow I mean velocity of the flow relative to the blade and the resultant is the absolute velocity. We have also identified angles that is the flow angle alpha and blade angle beta at the inlet and outlet. The impeller is rotating at an angular speed omega. right? So, if we try to recall that which is most important for the pump that the head will be developed by the pump and that expression given by Euler's is u 2 c theta 2 minus u 1 c theta 1 by g. Right. So, this is the expression we know though it is the expression for an for the ideal head. We did not take the frictional losses and other losses into account while driving this uh, relation, 
and that is why this expression is definitely the expression of the ideal head will be developed by the pump. Okay. Now, we also have discussed the effect of inlet swirl just for the recapitulation you know that from the expression that we have derived from this h is equal to u 2 c theta 2 minus u 1 c theta 1 by g the negative that is u 1 c theta 1 part that is getting subtracted from the u 2 c theta 2 where c theta 2 and c theta 1 these two are the components of absolute velocity in the tangential direction both at the I mean at the outlet and inlet. Okay. So, minus u 1 c theta 1 u 1 is constant because r omega is constant and r 1 that is radius of the this r 1 and r 2 are constant. So, half radius and tip radius. So, these are the constants. So, basically now question is u uh, 1 c theta 1. So, we can play with c theta 1 definitely to have an alteration on the head which is being developed by the pump. Okay. So, we can see that if we can somehow make c theta 1 negative then the head developed by the pump although it is ideal will be high. If ideal head is high definitely the actual head also will be high, but fine I mean may be in that not in that proportion, but still we can expect that the actual head will be developed by the pump will be higher which will ensure that the efficiency of the pump will be high. Now, if we would like to have negative c theta 1 that means, we have discussed that the fluid particles which are I mean the fluid which is entering to the in, you know impeller rather to the pump at the inlet to the impeller I mean the fluid particles if the fluid is having rotation which is in the direction uh, rather which is in the opposite direction to the pump impeller rotation then it will be having negative c theta 1 that is what we have discussed. So, this fellow c theta 1 is may be positive it may be 0 or it may be negative. Right. So, this c theta 1 component right this c theta 1 component it may be positive it may be 0 it may be negative. Okay. So, we should see now that we cannot alter u 1 definitely we can alter u 2 because if you need to alter u 2 for a given speed of the pump uh, that is again restricted by the electrical motor which is used to run the pump the impeller outer diameter the hub you know tip diameter will increase and we cannot increase the tip diameter arbitrarily and that also will uh, create a problem that is the you know that will have impact on the bearing and also the uh, there will be imbalance. Now, uh, uh, imbalance of the uh, pump rotation is shaft. So, now question is what we can do here is that we can alter c theta 1. Now, if c theta 1 is positive then fine it, it has no uh, I mean effect on the total head being developed by the pump definitely that part will be subtracted from the u 2 c theta 2 component. If we make it 0 then it will be u 2 c theta 2 by z. If it is negative that means, as I was telling that the fluid which is entering to the impeller will have rotation about their axis uh, that is in the opposite direction to the pump impeller rotation. In that case we can have c theta 1 negative and as if the net head that will be developed by the pump will be higher. We also have seen that negative c theta 1 is having another bad impact and that is if we have c theta 1 negative. So, this is uh, I mean if we now try to draw the velocity triangle at least for negative c theta 1. So, you can see negative c theta 1 positive c theta 1 is the case that we have drawn over here. So, this is a case for positive c theta 1. If c theta 1 0 then just if you try to draw the velocity triangles that c theta 1 equal to 0. So, it will have
So, alpha 1 will be pi by 2 c theta 1 0 no solved component at the inlet if it is negative that means c theta 1 negative then it will have this u 1 is fixed So, this is negative c theta 1. Question is u 1 is fixed as omega is fixed r 1 is fixed. So, for all three cases u 1 is remaining fixed although I could not draw uh, at per scale, but still what will happen you know that to maintain u 1 constant for, for all these cases if we need to have if we need to ensure c theta 1 negative then the relative component relative velocity at the inlet will be higher if that becomes higher it can be shown from the Bernoulli equation applied to the rotating frame of reference that the velocity at the inlet to the impeller will be lesser. So, pressure uh, uh, velocity is higher pressure will be lesser. So, if the relative velocity is higher at the inlet to the impeller then uh, which is the consequence of the negative c theta 1 pressure will fall. Uh, that that is what I was telling that it can be shown from the Bernoulli equation applied to the rotating frame of reference. If pressure falls there and finally, if it goes beyond the vapor pressure at that temperature then it will leads to an undesirable phenomenon that is known as cavitation. That part we will be discussing later in this course, but at least you should know here that this is not a desirable at all. So, so this c theta 1 negative is not desirable c theta 1 positive is not also desirable because it will leads to you know destruct the head being developed by the pump. So, the ideal condition is that we should go for the 0 c theta 1 that is no swirl at the inlet okay. that is called swirl free flow. So, in the context of pump operation if you try to look at different textbook you will find that c theta 1 0 that is no swirl at the inlet sometimes it is known as radial inlet there is no swirl or swirl free flow which is good for the pump at least that there should not be no problem no you know destruction on the head being developed by the pump ok. So, now if I try to discuss that the head which is being developed by the pump h equal to u 2 c theta 2 minus u 1 c theta 1 by g right. So, what we have understood from the previous exercise is that we can make c theta 1 0 that is no swirl at the inlet. So, if I discuss now that case that no swirl at inlet no swirl at inlet that means c theta 1 equal to 0 also it is known as radially inlet right. So, if we try to draw again of the impeller of the uh, sorry centrifugal pump of radial flow pump to be precise if I try to draw the impeller of a radial flow pump right ok. And just if we try to draw the velocity triangle at the inlet it will be like this. u 1 w 1 c 1 this is pi by 2 and this is beta 1 alpha 1. So, alpha 1 equal to pi by 2 and 
C theta 1 0. So, that it is known as purely radial inlet, no small component, component at the inlet. Okay. If that is the case, then from this quantity we can write the and if we try to draw the this particular if I take out this particular blade and then this is u 1, this is w 1, c 1 and this is c r 2, this is c 2, this is w 2, c theta 2 and this is u 2. Okay. So, this is beta 2, this is alpha 2, it is rotating at an angular velocity omega and this is beta 1. Okay. So, this is the velocity triangles at the inlet and outlet of the pump impeller if the case is that there is no swirl at the inlet. Okay. So, now if we look at the expression that is the Euler's equation for pumps then h is equal to u 2 c theta 2 by g that is what we can write. Now, what we can do from this particular expression is that c theta 1 is equal to 0. Just we can look at the velocity triangle at the outlet, right. So, what is c theta 2 and this is also known as w theta 2. Right. Objective is to now check that this is the ideal case we have understood from the previous exercise. Now, how can we increase the head develop of the pump without increasing u 2 because if you need to increase u 2 then the r 2 will increase for a given rotational speed and that is not again a viable solution at hand. So, what we need to do is that we can play with the c theta 2 component that is the component of absolute velocity at the outlet of the pump and by how that means we can tune c theta 2. If we need to tune c theta 2, what are the design parameters in the context of pump impeller design that we should now uh, look for. Okay. So, basically what we can write from the uh, velocity triangle at the outlet that if I now apply that from the outlet triangle we can write u 2 this is u 2 minus w theta 2 by g c theta 2 just this total this total is u 2 if I you know subtract c theta 2 from u 2 we will get w theta 2 or c theta 2 is nothing but u 2 minus w theta 2 that is from the outlet velocity triangle. Okay. So, here we can write that c theta 2 is equal to u 2 minus w theta 2. Okay. So, just we have plugged in the expression of c theta 2 over here and we are getting this. What is this? So, this is nothing but again w theta 2 is there. See if w theta 2 is there then at least we can have a clue that we can convert this expression we can write this expression in terms of beta 2. Beta 2 is the blade angle at the outlet. So, cannot we change the blade angle at the outlet to have different head and that is what our objective should be. Okay. So, if I if I now go to the next slide that we have written h equal to u 2 u 2 minus w theta 2 by g. Just I am trying to draw the you know velocity triangles from the uh, outlet uh, that will help us. So, again if I try to draw the velocity triangles at the outlet only. C R 2, C 
w theta to c theta to this is u to this is w to this is beta to and this is c 2 and this is alpha 2. Okay. So, that is the I am drawing the inlet velocity triangle to complete the discussion. So, now you can see that w theta 2 can be written in terms of beta 2. So, that we can have at least one design parameter which we can control which we can tune to have the alteration on the head being developed. So, we can write that w theta 2 equal to C r 2 cot beta 2 that we can write from the outlet triangle w theta 2 is equal to C r 2 cot beta 2 where C r 2 is the flow velocity at the outlet. So, this is the flow velocity at outlet right. So, this is the flow velocity component at the outlet. So, if we now again write this expression on the on the expression uh, given above we can write h 2 is equal to u 2 square by g minus u 2 into w theta 2 right u 2 into w theta 2 that is nothing but u 2 into C r 2 cot beta 2 and we can write u 2 by g u 2 what is C r 2? We know that the pump this pump any pump a particular pump is installed in a station pumping station that pump will be able to deliver certain quantity of liquid. So, if it is used to deliver water in a plant from one place to the other then say the pump is installed to supply to you know to deliver q 1 amount of water. So, q 1 meter cube per second this is the discharge handled by the pump and against a head h meter right. Then what is C r 2 that is what we have discussed C r 2 is nothing but C r 2 is nothing but cube divided by flow area right. Flow area into flow velocity there is nothing but q that is what we have discussed. What is flow area that is pi d 2 that is 2 pi r 2 pi r 2 pi d 2 into b 2 that is thickness of the impeller. So, if impeller is having if I try to draw over here now that say this is the pump impeller So, this is the blade and if this is the B 2 and this is R 2 then flow area is pi D 2 into B 2. We can write this is Q divided by flow area into cot beta 2 right. So, you can see now which is very important at this point to understand. We started our discussion with different velocity triangles using Euler equation we have identified that the head developed by the pump can be changed by tuning the sole component of velocity at the inlet. The positive swirl that is positive C theta 2 is not good for the pump operation because it will it will always destruct some amount of head which is being developed right. Negative C theta 1 that is negative swirl is also although it is expected to increase the net head being developed by the pump, but it will have an adverse effect of 
inviting uh, undesirable phenomenon that is the cavitation. So, only solution is that we can have no soil at the inlet. So, that is C theta 1 0. Having considered that aspect that there is no soil at the inlet, we could write the expression of head in this form. What we can see from this expression? The head which is being developed by the pump is now function of u 2 of course, u 2 we cannot increase right that is what I was discussing about. I can increase it we can increase u 2 either by increasing omega or by increasing r 2. So, these two are not very you know I can say feasible options because if you would like to increase omega then again input energy will increase. Our objective is to have energy conversion. So, we need to rotate pump impeller either by using diesel engine or electric motor whatever may be the case in all the cases all these cases we need to provide input energy. So, the mechanical energy if we increase omega then mechanical energy will be high and so the input energy will be high. So, that that that, that is not the option for having higher I mean it is not a solution to look at the uh, higher efficiency of the pump. So, by increasing input energy if we now really target for having you know high efficiency that is that may not be the you know valid uh, you know approach. So, what we can do we can now q, q is fixed because that is the uh, basically I can say, but we can play I mean that uh, that how by tuning q we can definitely. Uh, so, q definitely q will be the one important design parameter that will be handled by the pump. So, always our target should be okay the pump should be able to run in a span of and in a range of q. So, it is not the case that always pumps should deliver unique quantity always it rather it is seen from the uh, uh, you know practical point of view that the pump which is installed in a pumping station should be able to you know operate in a range of q. So, that it should be able to meet the demand whenever it is required. So, uh, I mean this there will be definitely a design point, but it should be able to run uh, from plus minus design point that is uh, some 25 percent uh, plus minus of the design point without having or rather without involving any other operational issue. Flow area that is fixed because d 2 is fixed and b 2 is fixed. So, this is not a variable here. So, remaining is beta 2. So, now we should look that if we try to plot h and q that is again important that if we now try to plot u 2 h and q for a given r 2 for a given impeller diameter and for a given impeller width if we try to increase the discharge that is the total fluid that will be handled that will be delivered by the pump and then whether the head de the pressure developed by the pump will be higher or lower which an effect will be coming from the blade angle beta. So, that is what our objective now. So, if we now go to the next slide. So, what we have seen that h is nothing but u 2 by g u 2 minus q divided by flow area into cot beta 2 right. So, if we now try to draw h versus q right meter and meter cube per second head versus discharge. Again I am telling the sole purpose of having pump is to supply certain quantity of liquid against a certain amount of head right. Again if I try to give you an example if we need to supply water from a ground water tank to the tank which is situated at the top of the of a multi storied building then we also need to overcome the total height of the building as well as frictional losses those are there while fluid is uh, transported through a pipe valves. So, there will be pipes valves fitting. So, losses will be there that you have studied from classical fluid mechanics. Okay. So, now if we try to plot you can see when q is equal to 0 no discharge that is known as shut off head 
we will be discussing soon. So, no discharge pump is running without delivering any quantity that is known as and at that moment the head which if we try to if we can measure and that head is known as shut off head. So, the pump is running without delivering any discharge at that particular situation if we can measure the head the pressure you know build up by the pump that is shut off head. So, what is that shut off head? So, if I now try to draw it in a different color say this is the shut off head. Okay. So, this is basically u 2 square by g right. So, q is equal to 0 u 2 square by g right. So, this is this is q equal to 0. Now, whether you are changing q or not this is irrespective of q. So, that is why I have drawn this line parallel to the q axis. Okay. So, u 2 square this is called shut off head. So, now this is known as shut off head. Okay. And mind it this head which is plotted over here that is the ideal head. Okay. What will be the case? So, if we try to have the higher amount of head which will be uh, delivered by the pump, if we make beta 2 positive or beta 2 negative then whether the head developed by the pump will be high or low that will be dictated by the contact uh, that is uh, blade angle beta beta 2. Okay. So, if I now use different color say this color what will be the case if we have beta 2 negative. So, if beta 2 is negative right. So, if beta 2 is negative then right. So, this expression if beta 2 is negative then what will happen if beta 2 is negative that is uh, uh, sorry I am sorry when beta 2 is greater than 90 sorry when beta 2 is greater than 90 degree then the quantity will be positive. So, when beta 2 that is the blade angle at the outlet I am sorry when the blade angle at the outlet is greater than 90 degree then the entire quantity will be positive and this is the case. So, this is for beta 2 is equal to 90 degree. So, what we can see from this expression that cot theta is negative when beta 2 greater than 90 degree and this quantity will be positive. So, we can see if we keep on increasing head that is if we try to have more amount of discharge from the pump itself we can see the head being developed by the pump will be high. And if beta 2 is less than 90 degree then again if I take different color say I am taking this color and then. So, this is the case beta 2 less than 90 degree and this is the case when beta 2 is equal to 90 degree right. So, beta 2 is 90 degree. So, now question is even if when q is equal to 0 that is the shut off head now you can see when q is equal to 0 that is shut off head, but if we can make beta 2 is equal to 0 the pump will be able to the shut off head that will remain constant. So, you can see that head is irrespective of q because beta 2 is equal to 0. So, if we make outlet blade angle at the outlet which is 90 degree then you can see the head developed by the pump will remain constant irrespective of the discharge. So, irrespective of the fluid volume will be handled by the pump the head will remain constant for the straight blade that is beta 2 is equal to 90 degree we will discuss, but when beta 2 greater than 90 degree then you can see the we if we try to have more amount of discharge from the pump then the head developed by the pump will be higher good that is very good. On the other hand if we have neg I mean beta 2 90 less than 90 degree blade angle less than 90 degree then with increasing head head developed by the pump will be always less than the shut off head that you can see from this expression. Okay. Now, we will quickly revisit that beta 2 90 degree what will be the you know blade angle at the outlet right. So, if we try to draw beta 2 equal to 90 degree. So, if we try to draw right. 
if beta 2 is equal to 90 degree we have to draw velocity triangle at the outlet. So, what will be the velocity triangle at the outlet? So, you can see blade beta 2 is 90 degree that is straight blade ok. So, that means W 2 will be like this you know the blade angle the blade angle that I have discussed ok. So, it makes the relative velocity makes an angle in the tangential component with the tangential component. So, that is the relative velocity which makes an angle with the tangential component and that is beta 2. So, this is W 2 right. So, this is the case when beta 2 is equal to 90 degree you can see. So, relative velocity makes an angle beta with the tangential component and that is the relative velocity uh, uh, blade angle at the outlet ok. Now, if beta 2 is less than 90 degree then right if beta 2 is equal to less than 90 degree then again right you can see from the schematic it is less than 90 degree right and beta 2 is greater than 90 degree. Then again I am trying to draw the pump impeller. right. So, you can see the relative velocity is making an angle with the tangential component which is greater than 90 degree. So, this is beta 2 is equal to uh, beta 2 is equal to uh, I mean higher than beta 2 beta 2 is greater than 90, 90 degree ok. So, what we can see from these three different cases is that definitely to have whether it is 90 degree it is known as straight blade ok. If I now use different color it is 90 degree straight blade. If it is if you need to ensure that the pump is rotating in the clockwise direction for all these three all three cases because if we try to have a comparison we should have a common basis for the comparison right. So, for the first one beta 2 is equal to 90 degree that is straight blade impeller is rotating in the clockwise direction at an angular velocity omega. Second case beta 2 less than 90 degree. So, pump is rotating in the clockwise direction. So, the blade shape will be like this right and the third case that is better to get up the 90 degree pump is rotating again in the clockwise direction. So, it will have like this what would what I would like to conclude over here is that we can definitely have basically a change in the head being developed by the pump by changing the blade angle at the outlet. If it is 90 degree irrespective of the pump uh, irrespective of the discharge handled by the pump the pump will always be able to develop this amount of head u 2 square by g that is the straight blade. So, this is straight blade. right. If it is less than 90 degree we have seen from the second case that blades are pump is rotating in the clockwise direction and blades are inclined away from the direction of the rotation right. So, outlet point that is point 2 which is away from the direction of the pump rotation and those blades are known as backward curve blades or sometimes backward curve vanes. So, backward blades so, 
I mean again I am telling outlet point 2 which is away in the away from the direction of the pump rotation. So, pump is rotating in the direction that is clockwise direction, but it is always away from the pump direction uh, rotation of the pump uh, in that away from the direction of the pump rotation. Third case that is beta 2 greater than 90 degree we can see that if we keep on increasing that is if we want more amount of discharge from the pump head being developed by the pump will be higher very good what we can see the blades so pump is rotating pump is rotating in this direction right clockwise direction so point 2 which is inclined in the direction of pump rotation so the point 2 that is at the outlet which is inclined in the direction of pump rotation and that is known as forward curve. So, basically in the forward, so in that is favoring, so that is forward. So, this is known as forward curved blades or fans. Sometimes these are known as BCV and these are known as FCV, FCV ok. So, you can see forward curved the curvature of the blade is such that it is in the direction of the pump impeller rotation in the forward direction it is in the backward direction. So, if we have forward curve vanes we can see the head developed by the pump will be high question is if that is the case that is quite clear from this diagram as well that if we keep on increasing that if we demand more amount of discharge from the pump itself then the head being developed by the pump will be high rather higher for the case when blade blades are forward cup blades. So, question is should we go for forward cup blades for the pump operation in this context I will tell you that although I will discuss uh, maybe in in the next class that forward curve blades although the efficiency I mean forward curve blades although we can see that the with increasing amount with increasing discharge head developed by the pump will be high, but that is that that blades are not desirable. We will see that the C 2 component for this kind of kind of blades the absolute velocity component at the outlet will be very high if that is very high then the leaving loss that is half m c 2 square will be high and it will reduce the pump efficiency. So, basically the absolute velocity component leaving the pump impeller that is nowhere responsible I mean uh, that part which is leaving without uh, doing some work without I mean uh, increasing the head being developed by the pump. So, that is what I am telling the forward cup vents all are, are having disadvantage as the leaving loss will be high that we will discuss while backward curve vents are preferred although the efficiency of the backward curve vents are not very high because you can see with increasing Q the head developed by the pump will be less. So, but the backward curve vents are sometimes preferable over the forward curve vents because for the backward curve vents the leaving loss is not very high. Not only that there are another important you know uh, disadvantage. So, there are issues again I will be discussing. So, uh, here only I cannot conclude that the backward curve vents forward curve vents are having higher efficiency. For up to today's discussion you can see that if the forward curve vents is there then probably you can see that with increasing amount of uh, discharge the head developed by the pump will be high. So, maybe for that for today's discussion you should know that the efficiency of the forward curve vents are I mean is very high, but still the leaving loss will be high. Now, uh, uh, this is uh, what we have discussed if we uh, quickly move to the another part that part again we will be discussing that you know forward curve vents though forward curve vents are forward curve vents are having an important feature that with increasing amount of discharge head developed by the pump will be high, but the leaving loss will be high and that is why the efficiency becomes higher for the backward curve vents ok. So, backward curve vents backward curve vents I am writing that if I now try to draw. So, uh, this is the 
pump impeller, you can see this is the forward cup vanes. So, this is W2, this is beta 2, you can see this is C2, this is U2 and this is W2. You can see C2 is increasing for, for a given U2, so, U2 will remain fixed because because the pump is rotating at a, at uh, uh, omega that is fixed and R2 is also fixed, so U2 is fixed. For a given U, given U2, if we have back forward curve vents, so this is forward curve vents FCV, then we can see C2 is high. If C2 is high, then leaving loss that leaving loss that is half m c 2 square that will be high. So, this is the amount of energy which is going to be uh, not utilized. So, the loss is high and that is why eta backward curve vein is always higher than eta forward curve vein. So, although we have seen that the forward curve veins are having a special feature that with increasing amount of discharge head is becoming high, still because of this high living loss the efficiency of the backward curve vents are higher than the forward curve vents. Nevertheless, there are places knowing fully that the backward curve vents will be having higher efficiency forward curve vents are preferred because you will find that now if I try to draw two you know different impeller. Okay. So, so, you can see that you know this this is forward curve vein and this impeller is having a few vents which are backward curve. So, the I have drawn two impellers, the first one is equipped with a few vents which are known as forward curve vents because the vents outlet of the vents which is oriented in the direction of the rotation of the pump impeller, while for the backward curve vents you can see the pump is rotating in the clockwise direction while the outlet that is the point 2 which is oriented in the reverse uh, rather in the away in the direction which is away from the pump uh, rotation. So, you can see uh, we have discussed about that uh, uh, forward curve vents are not you know having high efficiency because of the high living loss that we can see from the velocity angle at the outlet. The C2 component will be very high. If C2 component is very high, then leaving loss also will be high and, and that will always distract some amount of available energy to be converted into the head. So, because mechanical energy is input energy, some part of the mechanical energy will be converted to increase the stored energy of the fluid in terms of head. But if that amount is very high, then that will be distracted. So, basically that will be you know uh, taken away by this component and as a result of which the uh, efficiency of the forward curve vents uh, is very less as compared to backward curve vent. Nevertheless, what I told you that there are places in particular jute mill, paper mill where there is very you know dusty you know there are uh, the environment is really dusty. So, what will happen you know the pump is pump is installed in there to supply uh, liquid then what will happen if you know particles are getting deposited on the pump impeller. So, these are the particles these are the particles. You can see the particles which are the pump is rotating in this direction because of the special configuration of the blades particles which are deposited in this side will be you know will no longer will no longer remain with the plate itself. So, particles there are places as I told you jute mill paper mill where environment is really dusty. In this dusty environment, if, if a particular pump is installed and pump is operated with this forward curve vents, what will be the case? The dust particles which are being deposited on this particular side of the blade will no longer remain with the blade itself because of this particular configuration. So, it will I mean blade erosion because of this dust deposition will not be there. On the other hand, 
there will be a probability or tendency of having blade erosion because of this dust deposition for this backward curve vane. That is why although efficiency of the backward curve vent, backward curve vent, vents rather is higher than the forward curve vents, there are places where forward curve vents are preferred over the backward curve vents only because of this. Okay. So, uh, with this I stop my discussion today and we will continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you.